Evening all. Well, you know what, it's not every week that we have a story of sex and violence involving a psychopathic vicar and a paranoid desk sergeant, who between them start a reign of terror the like of which the orbital broadcast bunker has never seen. No, it's not every week we give you a story like this. And this week is really no exception, you know, well, still keeps Mr B off the streets. Welcome ladles and jelly spoons to Kai Mathy's YouTube channel coming at you live via videotape from the Orbital Broadcast Bunker, Britain's first and only airborne subterranean studio. It is that time of the month again ladles and jelly spoons where we take a trip down memory lane and revisit some of the classics. Diving deep into the golden age of retro gaming and boy do we have some button smashingly good games for you. Yeah, remember these bad boys here eh? back in the day our thumbs were on overdrive as we wrestled with these behemoth controllers trying to you know rescue princess or save the world or whatever but you know what we loved every clickety clack of it. And let's not even talk about the old floppy disks my god if you had one of those it was like the ultimate retro gaming status symbol. Ah the 90s we're saving your game was an adventure in itself. So make yourself a brew, click that start button because we're about to take a joyride down memory lane and you don't want to miss out. And if you enjoy this video please be sure to click the old like button faster than Sonic can collect rings. Stay tuned for some epic gameplay and unforgettable retro games. Round one fight! Mortal Kombat 2 Mortal Kombat 2 is a classic arcade fighting game developed and published by Midway Games. It was released in 1993 as a sequel to the original Mortal Kombat. It quickly became one of the most popular and influential games in the fighting genre. Mortal Kombat 2 was a massive success in arcades and later on home consoles as well. It contributed significantly to the popularity of the Mortal Kombat franchise, which has since become one of the most enduring and successful fighting game series in the world. The game's success also spawned numerous sequels, spin-offs and adaptations into other media, including movies and television series. Three of the cast members for Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 filed a lawsuit against Midway shortly after the game was released. The claim? The physical instructors slash martial artists Elizabeth Malecki, Sonya Blade, Kathleen Zamir, Katana and Melina and Philip Arn were under the impression that they were hired under typical acting contracts and were entitled to a small modicum of benefits including royalties of title sales etc. The plaintiffs banded together against Midway who took the case to court. Eventually the judge filed on Midway's behalf citing that the work done by the plaintiffs for Midway was strictly a work for hire deal and Midway owned all the property and benefits on the characters, titles etc. As a side note, it has always been rumoured that this lawsuit was what prompted Midway to remove Katana and its variations from Mortal Kombat 3. The game was eventually ported to various home consoles including the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive as well as others. However, due to Nintendo's stricter content policy at the time, the Super Nintendo version of the game had some censorship, whilst the Sega Genesis version was less censored and closer to the arcade original. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 2 is a classic arcade fighting game that built upon the success of the original game by introducing new characters, fatalities and gameplay elements. It plays a significant role in shaping the fighting game genre and remains an iconic and influential title in the history of video games. Go out with someone more but unpredictable. Sam and Max Hit the Road, a classic point and click graphic adventure game developed and published by LucasArts. It is based on the comic book characters Sam and Max, created by cartoonist Steve Purcell. The game is known for its quirky humour, memorable characters and offbeat storytelling. I can tell you that Sam and Max Hit the Road appears in book 1001 video games you must play before you die by general editor Tony Mott of Edge Magazine fame. As a point and click adventure game, players interact with the game world by pointing and clicking on objects and characters to gather clues, solve puzzles and progress the story. 
The game features a variety of locations to explore, including the mysterious world of fish, a carnival sideshow, and a country western style bar. A sequel to Sam and Max Hit the Road and Sam and Max Freelance Police was developed but cancelled in 2004. This is because LucasArts thought it were not appropriate to release a graphic adventure game on the PC at that time. Despite many petitions and negative feedback about the cancellation, the game was never put back into production. That was until 2006 when Telltale Games developed a series of episodic adventure games based on Sam and Max, which introduced the characters to a new generation of video game loving fans. These games are titled Sam and Max Save the World and Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space. They continue the humorous adventures of the duo. Sam and Max Hit the Road is a classic point and click adventure game, known for its quirky humour, memorable characters and imaginative storytelling. It has left a lasting impression on the adventure game genre and is fondly remembered by fans of both the comics and the video game. During the time in which Steve Purcell, the creator of Sam and Max, worked at LucasArts, Sam and Max, or only Max, made cameos in other games including Monkey Island, Monkey Island Island 2, The Curse of Monkey Island, Day of the Tentacle, Rebel Assault 2, Jedi Knight, Full Throttle and Shadows of the Empire. Not that I don't like you, it's just that, well, you're too nice a guy, I guess. I think I'd rather go out with someone more but unpredictable. November 1998 now, a year that saw video game retailers Funkoland open its 300th location in Nashville, Tennessee, not to mention the Dreamcast was released in Japan. The Dreamcast is a home video game console released by Sega in November 1998 in Japan, September 1999 in North America and October 1999 in Europe. It was the first 6th generation gaming console, preceded by Sony's PlayStation 2 and then Nintendo GameCube and then by Microsoft's Xbox. The Dreamcast was Sega's final console. 2001 saw its discontinuation, ending the company's 18 years in the console market. We demand a retro review special! Back in your kitchen, Keith, otherwise you will not get the opportunity to play these retro titles. <laughs> That was a good shot. Sin. A first person shooter video game developed by Ritual Entertainment and published by Activision. It was released in 1998 for Microsoft Windows. Sin is notable for being one of the early FPS games to incorporate elements of interactivity and decision making within gameplay. Now, when Sin were first released, it was buggy as hell. At one point, one of the first bosses just stood there and let you bloody hit him! Sin features your typical FPS gameplay elements, such as shooting, exploration and puzzle solving. What set it apart at the time though was its branching storyline and mission structure. Players could make choices that affected the game's narrative and outcome, leading to multiple possible endings. This non-linear approach was relatively uncommon in first-person shooters of the late 90s. Now, did you know that not only in the German version of the game were all the blood and gore effects removed, but in 2000 a feature-length anime based on the game were released on VHS and DVD. Ah, uh, VHS, who remembers those? Anyone? Sin was a 1998 PC FPS game known for its non-linear storytelling, interactivity and multiple endings. It was a notable entry in the FPS genre at the time, offering players choices and consequences in a futuristic and dystopian world. Officer, I'll drop you here and dust off! Good morning and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. Half-Life, a groundbreaking first-person shooter video game developed by Valve Corporation and published by Sierra Studios. Released in 1998 for Microsoft Windows, Half-Life is widely regarded as one of the most influential and critically acclaimed video games in the history of the medium. Now, apparently Valve had written a part for Gordon's wife, Gina, to appear in the game. Now, the idea unfortunately got scrapped, but she does still make an appearance in the game. Her model was used as one of the holographic trainers. And if you're wondering, yes, Half-Life does indeed appear in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die, by Tony Mott. The editor-in-chief at 
Edge magazine. Half-Life introduced several innovative gameplay elements that set it apart from other FPS games of the time. These included a continuous and immersive narrative, a first-person perspective that never switched to cutscenes, and a lack of traditional level loading screens, allowing players to remain engaged in the game world throughout their journey. The success of Half-Life had a profound impact on the gaming industry, influencing the design of future FPS games and establishing Valve as a prominent game developer. The franchise's enduring popularity has led to the long-awaited Half-Life Alex, a VR exclusive game released in 2020, and renewed interest and the possibility of a fully-fledged Half-Life 3. Half-Life at one point was completely finished for the Dreamcast console. Prima, the official strategy guide folks, even had a Dreamcast exclusive guide published. Now, unfortunately though, the game itself wasn't published, uh, probably due to the fact that Sega announced the discontinuation of the Dreamcast and they would no longer be producing new Dreamcasts. You know, in certain circles of the internet, uh, a copy can still be found and run on a Dreamcast. A Macintosh port was in the works with Westlake Interactive and reached beta before being cancelled because of concerns about responsibility for tech support. Half-Life is a highly influential and critically acclaimed first-person shooter known for its immersive storytelling, innovative gameplay and lasting impact on the gaming industry. It remains a classic and is remembered as a pivotal moment in the history of video games. <laughs> Now then, we've been off the airwaves for quite some time, and this might in fact be the first ever Kai Mathy video that you at home are watching, so it's possible that you might need to know the story so far. Chief Sitting Bull Kai, he of the black feet and tide mark round his neck, puffed at his wampum reflectively, as he had an all over wash in his bison, played with amazing dexterity by the lovely running water in all bedrooms, fantastic Mr. Connor. Besides him squatted his daughter, Crazy Horse Engage, she of the pale face and bucket seat, idly sewing an Apache on her wigwam. Where was his wife? Mini Ha Ha Barker, not getting much Ha Ha these days and getting noticeably more Mini. It's been nearly an hour and a half, he thought. Ninety minutes and still no squire? At that moment she appeared around the bend, her usual state, in a canoe made from the wood bark of a rude dog. From her waist dangled a disgusting scalp, which dangled a disgusting body. The apparition spoke. Me dicky, how? I mean, we've been wondering that for years. I think you two have been at the metal polish again. Um, if you're still watching after that, then please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I mean, if you're still watching, it's fairly obvious that you enjoy what we're doing here. We currently stand at 370 subscribers and we are grateful for every single one of you, but we really want to push for our first milestone, 500 subscribers. And I don't think we'll do it before Christmas 2023, but we'd love to reach it in the first quarter of 2024. The only way we can do this is with your help. So please subscribe, share this video out, comment, and of course, click that like button. But Enough of that, back to video games of 2003. Prince of Persia The Sands of Time, a critically acclaimed action-adventure video game developed and published by Ubisoft. It was released in 2003 and is the first entry in the Prince of Persia series to feature 3D graphics and modern gameplay mechanics. The game is known for its fluid acrobatics, innovative time manipulation gameplay and engaging story. Now, several times the main character will mention the legendary Rustam in comparison to what the prince is able to do. Rustam was a Persian hero noted for his great strength, born with prematurely grey hair. Rustam slew a rampaging white elephant with a single blow at the age of ten. The game follows the journey of an unnamed prince who inadvertently unleashes the sands of time while seeking a powerful artefact. This release transforms the inhabitants of his father's palace into sand creatures, and the prince must navigate the palace to undo the damage he has caused. The PlayStation 2 and GameCube versions of the game feature a hidden version of the original Prince of Persia, which once unlocked can be played at will. Now you know, the Xbox version of the uh, game also features the first Prince of Persia, but also features the second Prince of Persia, the Shadow and the Flame, as unlockable content. The Windows version of the game does not feature either 
game hidden anywhere. The Sands of Time introduced innovative gameplay elements. The Prince is known for his acrobatic abilities, which allow him to perform impressive parkour style moves like wall running, swinging from poles and climbing. The game also features a time manipulation system that lets players rewind time, effectively reversing any mistakes they might have made and giving them an edge in combat and platforming. Now, the PlayStation 2 Greatest Hits budget release of the game confusingly uses the cover art for the 2010 game Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands. However, that doesn't stop Prince of Persia The Sands of Time appearing in the book 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die by Tony Mott, the chief and editor at Edge magazine. Prince of Persia The Sands of Time is considered one of the most iconic and influential action adventure games of its time. Its innovative gameplay, its captivating story continue to make it a beloved title in the gaming community and it's played a key role in reviving the Prince of Persia franchise. Shall I continue my story from here the next time we're interrupted? Lord of the Rings Return of the King an action-adventure video game developed by EA Redwood Shores, later known as Visceral Games, and published by Electronic Arts. It was released in 2003 to coincide with the release of the film of the same name, which is the final instalment in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings film trilogy. The game is the second and final entry in the Lord of the Rings video game series, and follows the events of the film closely. The game is primarily an action-adventure game with hack-and-slash combat elements. Players must battle hordes of orcs, urukai and other creatures of Mordor whilst progressing through various levels inspired by locations from the films such as Minas Tirith, Pelennor Fields and the Black Gate. The game also includes sequences with different gameplay styles such as stealth, platforming and cooperative play. The Lord of the Rings Return of the King is a game that successfully translated the epic emotional journey of the films onto gaming platforms. It appealed to both fans of the movies and to action adventure games, offering the opportunity to experience the climactic events of Lord of the Rings in an interactive and engaging way. During the first quarter of 2004, Lord of the Rings Return of the King for the PlayStation 2 achieved a gold award in Germany for selling over 100,000 units, but we know from other sales figures that it sold under 200,000 units across Germany, Austria and Switzerland. We've hit November 2013 and a couple of games that aren't technically retro, but it will probably surprise you to learn that they are now 10 years old. PlayStation 4, a video game console developed and produced by Sony Computer Entertainment. It was released in North America on November 15, 2013, and it marked the fourth major home video game console in the PlayStation series. The PlayStation 4 is powered by a custom 8-core AMD Jaguar processor and features an AMD Radeon graphics processor providing high-quality graphics and performance. It includes 8GB of GDDR5 RAM and a 500GB or 1TB hard drive for storage. The console also has a built-in Blu-ray slash DVD drive. The PlayStation 4 was succeeded by the PlayStation 5, which was released in 2020, offering more advanced hardware and gaming experiences. But the PlayStation 4 played a significant role in shaping the gaming landscape during its generation. Its strong lineup of games, user-friendly interface and features for sharing and streaming content made it a popular choice amongst fans of video games. And my goal is to not have a goal. Just to be somewhere that I ain't never really been before. Did you know that there are 22,836 video games on the PlayStation 4 released between 2013 and 2023? The Xbox One, a video game console developed and produced by Microsoft. It was released in November 2013 and is the third major home video game console in the Xbox series. The Xbox One represented a significant step forward for the Xbox platform, incorporating not only gaming but also a broader range of entertainment and multimedia features. 
The Xbox One features a custom 8-core AMD processor, 8GB of DDR3 RAM and an AMD Radeon graphics processor, offering improved graphics and performance compared to its predecessor, the Xbox 360. The console includes a built-in Blu-ray slash DVD drive. Initially, the Xbox One was bundled with a second-generation Kinect sensor, which allowed for voice and gesture control of the console, as well as providing features for motion-controlled gaming and video chat. However, Microsoft later released a version of the Xbox One without the Kinect. The Xbox One was succeeded by the Xbox Series X and Series S, which were released in November of 2020 and represent the current generation of Xbox consoles. The Xbox One aimed to be an all-encompassing entertainment and gaming system, with a strong focus on multimedia, social features and exclusive game titles. While it faced initial criticism regarding its online connectivity requirements and DRM policies, which it later revised, it still carved out a place in the gaming world, competing with Sony's PlayStation 4 during its generation. Oh well I don't know, call me old fashioned, but I do think that, you know, covering games consoles rather than video games themselves is a little bit of a cop. Oh, oh, hello. Uh, did you know that there are 16,645 video games on the Xbox One released between 2013 and 2023? Well, the ladles and jelly spoons, thank you so much for watching. We really hope that you enjoyed this video and please do let us know if you played any of the games that we have talked about. As I said earlier, if you're not subscribed, please do so and help us reach our 500 subscriber goal. Hashtag rude to 500 500 what before we go though the answers to last month's quiz and the questions were complete the following song titles now first off we had that old black well of course the answer was magic and not pudding as one of you suggested uh, second title was i can't begin to well, Mr. B, I can only hope that you are being facetious, because if you really can't begin to what you said, I advise that you seek help immediately. Right, now, this week's question. It's a what is it question, and if you've got a pencil and paper ready, what is it that has a short, fat, orange body, covered with hair, eight tentacles, and a sharp beak? Right, have you got that? Good. Now, if you do know the answer, please put it down in the comments as quickly as possible, because one has just crawled up Keith's trouser leg. Bloody hell, it's heading towards my tea bags. Yeah. Cheerio. See you next week.